Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Katie Asko from Dublin, Ireland, and these are your latest headlines from around the world. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, prayed to Our Lady to help Europe. He expressed this prayer while addressing believers and pilgrims from Poland during his latest Wednesday general audience. The pontiff prayed that the Black Madonna, the patroness of Poland, would guide the destiny of the continent. He also remembered the thousands of pilgrims making their way to the Marian sanctuary of Jasnogora in Poland in recent days, praying for peace and reconciliation. The Holy Father said that among the pilgrims at the Black Madonna's shrine are Ukrainians who are being sheltered in the country. He said that his thoughts always go toward war torn Ukraine and repeated his appeal not to forget the plight of Ukrainians nor grow accustomed to the conflict their country is enduring. Pro-life advocates of USA's Louisiana are rejoicing as the last remaining abortion centers in the state are ceasing operations. Closing these centers will make Louisiana a state without any abortion clinics for the first time in 50 years. Following the implementation of trigger laws banning nearly all abortions, the three remaining centers filed a lawsuit to suspend the ban. Under this trigger law, abortions can be provided only to save the mother's life or when the preborn child wouldn't survive birth, and there are no exceptions for rape or incest. Louisiana's legal battle began days after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Pro-abortion advocates filed a lawsuit claiming the new law was unconstitutional and vague, which the Orleans Parish Civil District judge upheld. However, on August 12th, the state's apex court dismissed the appeal and reinstated the abortion ban. Welcoming the decision, Benjamin Clapper, the executive director of Louisiana Right to Life, said for the first time in almost 50 years, Louisiana will be free from businesses that exist to end the lives of precious unborn babies. The Latin Archbishop of Moscow, the Most Reverend Paolo Pezzi, has said that a special pilgrimage will be organised by believers to Kazakhstan when Pope Francis makes a visit to the country. The Holy Father is scheduled to visit the Central Asian nation from September 13th to 15th for the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions. The pilgrimage will begin in Moscow on September 12th with the motto, We are Witnesses of Unity. En route to Kazakhstan, the pilgrims will halt at the Siberian city of Omsk, the next day, the group will reach Karaganda in Kazakhstan. From there, they will proceed to Karlag, where gulags containing tens of thousands of people, including Christians, lost their lives between 1930 and 1960 during Soviet rule. On September 14th, the group will arrive in the capital, Nur Sultan, to visit the Pope's Holy Mass. The prelate said that the pilgrimage is an opportunity for believers to show their love and respect for the Pope. Yet another journalist has been killed in violence hit Mexico. 62-year-old Juan Arion Lopez, an independent crime reporter, was found dead in the border town of San Luis Rio, Colorado. He went missing on August 9th and his remains were identified based on fingerprints and tattoos. The autopsy revealed that he was fatally clubbed with a blunt object. His last report on his webpage was about a drug bust. Law enforcement officers are probing whether the killing was related to his job as a reporter. Mexico has turned out to be the most dangerous country for journalists. According to Rights Group Article 19, as many as 13 journalists have been murdered in Mexico this year. Last week, four employees of a radio station were killed in Ciudad Juarez, another border town. Earlier this month, another journalist was killed in the central state of Guanajuato. In the U.S. state of Texas, a school district is taking out 41 books, including the Bible, from its libraries. This comes as Keller Independent School District administrators conduct a review to be ratified by its board of trustees. As well as the Bible, Anne Frank's diary and All Boys Aren't Blue are among the books to be removed. There are reports that staff and librarians are being asked to review books that were challenged in 2021 to see if they meet the new requirements of the policies. The school district makes it clear that members of the community, parents and staff can challenge a book that is included in the Keller ISD educational program. In the USA, police have arrested a man in connection with the recent burglary and property destruction at a Catholic school in northeastern Washington, D.C. Authorities have informed that 32-year-old Demetrius Hansford was arrested on Tuesday and charged with the theft and vandalism. The St. Anthony Catholic School in Brooklyn faced its first act of vandalism on August 10th. A statue of St. Anthony was toppled, 
causing its head to break off, which has still not been located. A window pane and the benches in the playground were also damaged. A few days later, the church was broken into, and 1400 US dollars in cash, three digital cameras, memory cards, flash drives, and a jar of loose coins from the principal's office were stolen. This time, too, the burglar shattered two other statues. Mr. Hansford was arrested after his mother identified some looted items in their home. The captain of the Egyptian soccer team and Liverpool star Mohamed Salah has donated 156,000 US dollars to rebuild a damaged Coptic church. The Abu Sufin church in Giza suffered from severe fire damage last Sunday. As many as 41 worshippers lost their lives and 14 suffered burn injuries in the blaze. Shortly after the incident, Mr. Salah expressed his condolences on Twitter. According to the Sunday Times ranking, the Liverpool striker is the eighth most magnanimous person in the United Kingdom. His total donations are estimated to be 6% of his fortune of about 50 million US dollars. In 2019, he donated 3 million US dollars to the National Cancer Institute in Cairo after it was damaged in a car bomb explosion. In the Australian state of Victoria, a bill that would have coerced Catholic hospitals to offer abortion and euthanasia was defeated in Parliament. Lawmakers voted 28 to 7 on Wednesday, August 17th to stop the bill which would have forced all hospitals receiving government funding to offer these procedures. Among those who voted against the bill was outspoken politician Bernie Finn, who was expelled from the Victorian Liberal Party for saying all abortions should be banned. The bill was introduced by Reason Party lawmaker Fiona Patton and was put to vote after negotiations with the government were stalled. Health Minister Mary Ann Thomas also criticised the proposal, saying it would lead to some hospitals losing vital government funding. Those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow and visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.